Good morning. I'm Alan, and this is our online Sunday Bible study at 915 online Facebook and YouTube. I hope that you'll like and subscribe and turn on notifications so when we post something that you'll get it. And this is online only, but we do have live worship and a message here in Paris at 1010 a.m., but also online, Facebook, and YouTube. So I hope that you join us for our worship service after this, and I hope that you'll grab your Bible or a Bible app or a Kindle reader and follow along with our lesson. And I'm glad that you joined us. Today we're looking at Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 47, and it's all about good news for all. And you'll see the reason why in a minute. Well, let's look at the introduction to the lesson. In this week's lesson, we see that God's great promises were to be extended to Gentiles or non-Jewish people. That's why we are Christian believers, because originally the Jewish people were God's chosen people, and through the love and the grace of God and Jesus, he expanded that to include all peoples, and so that includes us. And until Acts chapter 10, the believers made no attempt, the Jewish believers made no attempt to include Gentiles or non-Jews in their worship or in sharing the gospel with them. But the Apostle Paul had been chosen by God to, to bring the Lord's name to tell the Gentiles about Jesus. Before that happened, the Apostle Peter was the one that opened the way to the Jewish people to let them know that Gentiles would now be included. And Paul says about the Gentiles, he says, remember that you were at this time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of, of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. He said this over in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. Having no hope and without God in the world. So it's an amazing thing that God has included us, that God has made us part of his family. And so God's plan was for us to be included in the gospel message. Now, if you have time, go back and read through Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10 right up until verse 34. And that will give you a lot of the background, a lot of the information that... I'm just going to kind of skim over real quickly to get you orientated so you know a little bit about what I'm talking about. But if you want to know more of the details, it's found in Acts chapter 9 and the beginning of Acts chapter 10. And after the conversion of Saul of Tarsus, where he becomes the Apostle Paul, the church in Jerusalem enjoyed peace and prosperity. They were no longer being persecuted by the Jewish people, or most of the Jewish people, because Paul was no longer the chief persecutor. And during this time, Peter was traveling throughout the areas around Jerusalem, and he stopped to visit the believers who lived in Lydda. And then while he was in Lydda, he went to the city of Joppa, and there was a follower, well, let me back up. He went to Lydda, and in the city next door in Joppa, there was a believer named Tabitha. She became sick, and she died. But the believers had heard Peter, hey, Peter's next door. He's over in the, in the next city, so let's go get him. So 
they sent two men to go get him, begged him to come quickly, and when, he, when Peter arrived, he sent people out of the room, he knelt down to pray, and he turned to Tabitha's body and said, Tabitha, stand up. And she opened her eyes, and he helped her stand up and showed the other believers that Tabitha was alive. Pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Well, of course, people everywhere in that region heard about what had happened, and many believed in the Lord. And so Peter stayed in Joppa for a while at the home of a man named Simon, Simon who was a tanner or worked with leather. And then in chapter 10, we're introduced to Cornelius. Cornelius was a Roman soldier. Actually, he was a centurion, which meant he was in charge of at least a hundred men. And he lived in Caesarea, and he was a devout or a religious man. And everyone who lived in his household were worshipers of the true God. And he also gave much of his money to help the poor, and he always prayed to God. You find that in the beginnings of Acts chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. And so he was probably seeking more understanding than what he knew at the time. So about 3 p.m., Cornelius was praying, and in, he had a vision, and in that vision, an angel appeared to him and told him to send for a certain Simon Peter, who was staying in Joppa, which was 30 miles down the road, from Caesarea. So immediately, Cornelius sent three men to Joppa to bring Peter to come visit him in Caesarea. And so when Peter and the, and the people that were around Peter arrived, Cornelius greeted him by bowing down in worship. And Peter told him not to do that because he himself was human. And the Lord Peter knew that he wasn't anything special. He just had a special calling, a special gift from God. And seeing all the people that were there, Peter spoke to them, reminding them that it was against Jewish law for a Jew to keep company with someone from another nation. In other words, the Jews and the Gentiles or the non-Jews did not mix. But he was there because God had shown him that he shouldn't call any man or any person common or unclean. And that's how the Jewish people, Jewish believers, considered the Gentiles. They considered them unclean or not holy enough. And he asked Cornelius why he had sent for him. And Cornelius said four days earlier he was praying when a man appeared before him and told him that his prayer was answered, and he was to, to send to Joppa for a man named Simon Peter, who would come and speak with him. Then Cornelius told Peter that he immediately sent for him, and now he was there. Everyone present wanted to hear what God had commanded him to say. And this is where our lesson begins in verse 34. Now the Jews of the first century AD taught that God had favored them over the Gentiles. In other words, they, they were God's chosen nation. So they thought that they were better than all the rest of the humans on the planet. They believed that God loved them, but hated those of the other nations. And this explains why the Lord needed to go to great lengths to get Peter to come to the home of Cornelius, a Roman citizen. And so that's why the apostle's opening line of his message might have caused some to wander in their minds, or wonder in their minds, as he said in verse 34, 
I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. And so with these words, Peter recognized that God did not exclude people from his offer of salvation based on race or nationality. And so this marks the beginning of the Jewish Christian believers having a favorable reception of the Gentiles into the church and a realization that the saving work of Jesus applies to all people. And the next thing is, is Peter introduced Jesus to the household of Cornelius. He describes it in verse 36. The message God sent to the people of Israel. He, be, he begins with John the Baptist, who, who announced the coming of Jesus the Messiah, and how Jesus came with the Holy Spirit and power doing ministry in both Galilee and Judea. And Peter also says that Jesus freed people under the power of the devil because God was with him. And so verses 37 and 38 sum up the apostles' description of Jesus' ministry. And Peter also added some other examples of Jesus teaching and healing the sick. And in verses 39 through 43, we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And so as a Roman centurion, Cornelius was no doubt familiar with the horrors and the practice of crucifixion. And he had witnessed many such deaths. And he would understand how horrible and how cruel this death was that Jesus suffered on the cross, even though he was innocent. And no one had ever survived a brutal scourging that Jesus received before they were put to death on the cross. However, it says here in verse 40, God raised Jesus from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. And Peter confirms and acknowledges the reality of the resurrection. He emphasizes that many people, including Peter, saw Jesus after he rose from the dead. And then it says in verse 41, Jesus was not seen by witnesses whom God had already chosen, or Jesus was seen by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And see, Peter offers this as proof, as confirmation, because only someone with a physical body could eat and drink. And so after his resurrection, the Savior commanded the apostles to preach the message of salvation, which in verse 43 says, F to, says to everyone, and this is the beginning of the gospel message being preached to everyone, regardless of race or nationality. It all comes down to those who believe in Jesus, they would receive forgiveness of sins through the name of Jesus. Now, eternal life does not, does not depend on keeping Jewish law. It comes solely through Jesus' work on the cross by faith and believers having a trust in Jesus and him alone. Now verses 44, for, 44 through 47. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. 
The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished by the gift of the Holy Spirit that had been poured out on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And so as Peter is speaking his message in verse 44, it says, While he was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came upon all those who were gathered listening to Peter speak. All those who were gathered in the home of Cornelius. And at the moment they believed in faith, the apostles' message, they received the Holy Spirit. And this is a repeat of what happened on the day of Pentecost. And he was the proof and the verification. Cornelius was and the people with him were the proof and verification that the Lord was welcoming Gentiles into his church solely on the basis of faith. Well, this shocked and surprised the Jewish Christians who were with, who were with Peter. The new Gentile believers possessed the same gift of the Holy Spirit as the ones in Jerusalem received when he came upon them. We as believers today have the same gift of the Holy Spirit that the believers received in Jerusalem and that the believers received at the house of Cornelius. Pretty amazing, isn't it? And so Luke says, because Luke is the one who wrote the book of Acts, Luke says in verse 46, they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. So Peter says in verse 47 to the Jewish believers who had come with him, he makes the case for baptism with water for the new Gentile believers who had received the Spirit in response to their faith. Now, the Spirit had already regenerated them or made them new. These new believers were brand new in the eyes of God. And the baptism represented their identification their identification with Jesus, as well as their entrance into the church on equal footing with the Jewish Christians. And once Peter realized that the Lord had broken down the traditional barriers between the Jews and the Gentiles or the non-Jews, especially within the church, he agreed to stay for a few more days to teach the believers and to answer their questions. And in verse 48, not part of today's lesson, he, it tells us that's exactly what he did. And so now that they had put their faith in Jesus, they needed further instruction on the teachings of Jesus. And all believers, whether they're old believers, or seasoned believers or new believers need to continue to learn God's word and God's instruction. What this lesson tells us and teaches us is God does not have favorites, except for maybe his son Jesus. Everyone is special to God. Everyone in God's eyes is worthy to receive the good news. All that God desires is that we fear him and we have faith in what he says. Though it is impossible to please God without faith, he does give everyone the opportunity to believe and thus to receive the gift of salvation. So how are, are, are we eager to preach the gospel? like Peter was? Are we eager to preach the gospel to people who are different from us? If someone different from us came into our church, maybe a person of a different race or nationality, and received Jesus, 
how would we respond? God wants us to learn and live the same lesson that he taught Peter, that he is no respecter of persons. We as Christians should lead the world in ending discrimination. For God sent his son to die for everyone. And all who respond to him in faith are in the same family as the Jewish believers, the non-Jewish believers. We are all part of one family in Jesus. And that's why the gospel is such good news for us. Let us pray. Almighty God, when we recall our past and we examine our today, we are humbled and we thank you for the freedom from anything that obstructs our love from one another. Give us a greater vision for the community of faith in the world and the courage to make your vision a part of today's world, to make this vision a reality. In Jesus' name, amen. The good news is God's kingdom is now available to all who believe. God doesn't discriminate, and neither, which, neither should we. Salvation is for all, period, for all people, period. And we thank God for that. I hope you th that you have a great Sunday. I hope that you come back and join us here in person in Paris or watch us online, Facebook and YouTube at 1010 a.m. And have a great Sunday.